now we'll take a look at a successful community collaboration in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. You know, we know that when communities collaborate around early childhood education, everyone, children, families, teachers, schools, Head Start, and community child care centers benefit. But collaborations don't happen overnight. For them to be successful, they require strong leadership, a lot of listening, time to build trust, and careful planning and implementation. Eau Claire has been a tremendous success thanks to the conversations they started more than five years ago. So let's take a look now at community collaboration in Wisconsin. What we will offer children now. What are you feeling about this new approach? Something you might fear about what's going to be happening. Our existing child care programs, are they going to be able to survive if the school takes the four-year-olds away? The choice of a parent is who they choose to go to is kind of our philosophies right. of how we have things set up. How are we going to maintain quality and consistency? Who would we put on a team? Uh, I think parents for sure. Kindergarten <laughs> teachers maybe? We have seen some amazing changes in the community with this collaboration. We are bringing people together that have probably never thought they'd be able to work together um, for the sole purpose of educating our, our young children. This is having a tremendously powerful impact on, on Wisconsin. The feedback we receive from parents and teachers on this collaborative approach is really positive. Children have really been the big winners. All children that are four years old now have an accessible program. That was not the case prior to Eau Claire for Tomorrow. And so every child has an opportunity to be in a classroom with a DPI certified teacher. Good morning. Hi, Cordell. The Eau Claire for Tomorrow program, or EC4T, is a community collaboration that involves the school district, Head Start programs, child care centers, and private preschools. Even though they're all different, um, they have a core element, a core set of principles that hold them all together. And it's that core that takes a while to develop and lots of communication necessary to develop that. While there was a belief in community collaborative work, there really wasn't a road map of how to do that. And so in many ways, a lot of what we did was um, grappled with a lot of things here, then met with people at the state level, and said, okay, now this is what we know we want to have happen. My job today is to be a process coach. We're going to do some reflection. The state does a number of things to support collaboration. They cannot drive it. So our state superintendent, Libby Burmaster, will provide her support to uh, Jill Haglin, the uh, early childhood consultant who is responsible for uh, for developing networks around the state, hosting and organizing the state-level collaborative council. And Jill's big creation was uh, a group of coaches who are then available to go out and work with communities. There's a few essential elements to um, creating a community approach to pre-K. I think the very first is to have a vision and have a mission. A second vital element is a strong parent involvement component. There are all sorts of opportunities that the collaborative programming has opened up for families. And as you move into implementation, it's just very important to have a strong professional development component. The teachers need support. And in a program like a collaborative pre-K program, teachers can feel pretty isolated. They're out at different centers. There's often only one 4K teacher at that center. And so professional development just becomes paramount. It's a wonderful chance to just network back and forth and know who else is out there and what else is being done in the area. We feel more professional now that we have been included in these different workshops. I'm concerned about the certification, concerned about how we're going to meet special needs um, children. There are still a lot more children out there that we're not reaching. One step in the process very early on was to have a listening session for the community to hear what the public had to say and we had a facilitator. Um, we as private owners have that fear as well as what will it, how will it impact our business. 
people in the community could come and discover what they wanted. It was an extremely important part of the process. Sure. Um, I'm a little frustrated because I came tonight to hear the plan and to know how we're going to move forward and I'm not sure if you have a plan. This meeting tonight is to have your views expressed. The information that we got from the listening sessions was actually used as we broke up into teams and started the work. Is there a committee or going to be on um, data or collecting data or anything? I don't know. I mean, I think that's up to us. What? We didn't always listen to each other in the beginning. The child care industry was very competitive before, and the really, really nice thing now is that um, we're all in it for the same thing. There's enough children to go around, and so the competitiveness has decreased, and we collaborate. It's also had some really nice spin-offs in that as we collaborate together, we find more things that we can do together. A good example of that would be our fluoride varnish program. What we've learned in Wisconsin is that once you get a few communities to show how this can be done, you really generate a lot of momentum and enthusiasm for this approach. Today in Wisconsin, there's some 60, arguably 70 uh, communities that have this community approach. The quality in the physical environment, the quality in the social environment, the educational environment has risen in every single setting. The school district programs have improved, our Head Start programs have improved, our child care centers have improved. And the more you can bring those people together and engage them, whether they represent business or families or schools, then the greater the success would be because you have a much broader stakeholder base. If you feel passionate like the Eau Claire community does about early childhood, then keep plugging forward and don't take no for an answer.